Mbaji, ready? I guess she's there. Yeah. For the presentation. So, Radhe Radhe. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Very warm welcome to Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Today, our uh, session will continue on our journey, uh, and we'll watch a very fascinating, uh, insightful lecture by Swami Ji. And thank you. Um, Smita ji and Harish ji for a wonderful session. It's one of my favorite topics, Gyan versus Bhakti, uh, Aham Brahmasmi versus Tat Sukh Suketvam and Soham versus Dasoham discussion. So we'll revisit it as the time presents, look at it from a scriptural Bhagavad Gita standpoint once it uh, those shlokas start coming or even otherwise. But let's move on to the topic of our discussion today. A very warm welcome to all of you. Let's get started by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. Let me share my screen and we will get underway. And I know we have a hard stop as well, so we will face it accordingly. Okay, let's get started then. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha Guru Sakshat Par Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru All right. So Radhe Radhe, very warm welcome to all of you. Let's get started. So today we will quickly go through 3.25. Uh, the shloka, the topic today is we are going to talk about, we are going to look at what we are talking about 3.25. 3 we we'll look at a Beautiful lecture from Swamiji. And then we have Ananya team, you know, the Seva team that we know out of that uh, Ananya team is going to present from our Seva team. I'm looking forward to that presentation as well. But before that, let's get started with our, oops, sorry about that, shloka for the day, uh, which we are going to briefly discuss today. Satta Karmanya Vidvansu Yatha Kurvanti Bharata Kuryad Vidvastata Sattash Chikirshu Loka Sangraham. All right. Do we have a few participants? Maybe we can pick up three or four hands. Not many today because yes, we please. have hard stop. Yes. As always, we have Samji. Samji, yes. Samji. Samji. Go ahead. Sakta karmanya vidvam so yadha kurvanti bharata kuryad vidvam sada asarta stike shur loka sangraham. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Sandhya ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Sandhya. Radhe Radhe. Sakta karmanya vidvam so yadha kurvanti bharata. Kuryad Vidvans Tata Saktash Chikir Shurlok Sangraham. Thank you. Very nice. I know it's a bit of a tongue twister, the second one. Sudhi Prakashji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Radhe. Nitinji. Sakta Karmanya Vidvamso Yada Kurvanti Bharata Kurvad Vidvans Tata Saktaha Chikir Shurloka Sangraham. Very nice. Thank you, Mrs. Piji. Okay, we can pick up maybe two or three more hands. Yeah. Ramesh Ji, Radhe Radhe. Yeah. Radhe Radhe Namaste. Sakta Karmanya Vitvam Saha Yatha Kurvanti Bharata Kuryad Vidvam Satha Saktaha. Chikir Shur Loka Sangraham. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. 
शक्ता कर्मण्य विद्वांशो यता कुर्वन्ति भारत कुर्याद विद्वांस तथा शक्त चिकीर्षु लोक संग्रहम राधे राधे Please thank you. We can pick up any new hands if we have, or pick up the remaining ones. Kishore ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Kishore ji. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Satta karmanya vidvamso yatha kurvanti bharata kuryad vidvamstata satta sat sattash chikeshur loka sangraham. Wonderful, very nice. Okay, we will freeze the hands. Last three. Riya ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Sakta karmanya vidman shah yata kurvanti bharata kuryad vidman stata sakta ha chikir shuloka sangraham. Wonderful, Riya ji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Ragi ji. Radhe Radhe. Yeah. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Sakta ha karmanne vidvanso yatha kurvanti bharata kuryad vidvans tatha sakta chikir chikir shur loko sangraham. Very nice, Ragi ji. Last but not the least, Chandra ji. चंद्रु जी राधे 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 सत्ता कर्मण्य विद्वांसो यथा कुरवंति भारत कुरियाद विद्वांस तथा सत्तेश चिकुशुर लोक संग्रहम वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड इन दिस श्लोका Lord Krishna is saying that as ignorant people perform their duties with attachment to the results, now if we are performing it, he is calling them ignorant people. O scion of Bharat, so should the wise act without attachment, for the sake of leading people on the right path. So tomorrow we'll look at the entire spectrum of the instructions that Lord Krishna is saying. Right? Sometimes when we go from shloka to shloka, we get lost. Or I tell us what what are you telling us? So I, I'm going to give you a very clear flowchart of what he's trying to tell here. Okay, so that he's giving us okay, which end of the spectrum do you fall, and where do you aspire to be? So let's move on and hear a beautiful lecture from Swamiji, insightful lecture, like I said, and also we are looking forward to the presentation as well. So um, just give me a sec. Did I share the sound? I don't know. Maybe I'll share the sound. Okay, it's it's there. It's shared. Chanting um. is followed by. Uh -huh. For if I did not carefully perform the prescribed, I would be responsible. Why? Step function. Here you go. Spirituality, the spiritual life. is a journey it is not a unit step function yesterday you were non spiritual today you heard the lecture you become spiritual one gentleman was asking me yesterday swami ji you know i heard that we should see our child and the neighbor's child as equal but uh, when i see uh, i am not able to practically implement this I said, forget it. Why are you trying to implement things that are impossible at this stage? What is possible for you to implement? You try and implement that. This spirituality is a journey. There was once a teacher. He quoted the Bhagavad Gita. You know the verse we did previously, twenty-third verse. He told his students, "Listen, what the great people do, the others should follow. The great people set an example to the others." One of the students was particularly smart. 
he said all right then let me now copy my teacher itself the next day he walked in before his teacher into the class and he sat down on the teacher's desk so when the teacher walked in he found the student sitting on his desk on his chair the student boomed go and sit down there amongst the students the teacher decided to play along and see what's going to unfold so he went down and sat down on the student's little chair the teacher was wondering what's going on the neighboring student said sir you know yesterday you said that the little one should follow what the great ones have done so he is trying to copy you the teacher said that's the matter <laughs> all right so he raised his hand sir i have a question for you now the student was scared how can i answer my teacher's question he admitted defeat the teacher said what did i instruct you yesterday the student said sir you said that what the great ones do we should all copy so i was trying to copy you the teacher said if you were trying to copy me then answer my question how can i do that then where are you copying me so what did you mean by copying you i meant that the path by which i achieved this seat you have to copy this path i first went through primary school then middle school then high school then i went on to become a graduate and also got my teacher certification and then after that i got the seat of a teacher you can't do exactly what i am doing spirituality is not a matter of one day one person you know we have the upanayanam sanskar so the upanayanam sanskar at that time the child the ceremony is performed and then he is given the sacred thread so the child told his parents that you know once i become a sanyasi i'll have to reject this thread the sanyasi rejects the sacred thread so i'll have to reject the sacred thread when i become a sanyasi yes why don't i reject it right now if you reject it right now you will knock off the ladder you have to reach that point we all need ladders to climb up it is right that you have to reach there but there is a ladder for reaching there you can't just ignore that ladder this process is what is required now the advaitis they say all is one right all is one all right all is one so are you at that enlightenment as yet once one guru ji instructed his king the king was his disciple he taught him the process of advait vedant there is only one brahma there is nothing else aham brahmasmi tattvam asi ayam atma brahma pragyanam brahma so the king said all right all is one very good i can utilize this knowledge for my benefit so he had his queen and there were the the maid servants in the palace so he started associating with the maid servants when the queen realized she was indignant what is my king my husband doing the king said that my teacher guru ji has said all is one everything is a part of the one so where is the difference between my wife and other ladies it's all one the queen was really annoyed she went to the guru ji and said what philosophy have you taught my husband he has become characterless the king 
king said my student is behaving in this fashion he taught a remedy to the queen now when it was time for the lunch and the queen used to serve the food so it was time the queen bought some excreta foul smelling excreta and placed it in front of her husband on the plate the husband said she what is this my dear husband this is rasgulla jalebi samosa but it is smelling so terrible and looking so awful this is not rasgulla sa jalebi samosa it is different from it so my dear husband you are seeing the distinction between delectable foods and excreta that means you are not situated on that platform of unified vision and yet when it comes to associating with women you are saying all is one wherever it is convenient to you you adopt the philosophy of duality and wherever it is convenient to you you adopt the philosophy of unity so it is all very well but shankaracharya himself had said agyasyal patra buddhasya sarvam brahmeti yo vadet maha niraya jaleshu satena viniyojita he said that without attaining the qualification if you go around saying aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi maha niraya jaleshu you will go straight to hell because then the internal detachment is not there you say all worship is an illusion all temples are illusions all deities are all illusions and you had no realization and the ladder for climbing up you have rejected it so that is why the ladder is given to us by god and we have to accept the ladder the great prophets you know if the teacher may be at the phd level but he is teaching standard 2 students he will teach 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 it doesn't mean the teacher knows only that much it means the students were only prepared for that much so these great prophets who descended they were completely enlightened but they preached according to desh kal and patra time place and the preparedness of the people that is why the variety in their teachings so we human beings at present need the ladder of work if you reject work prematurely like i told you you will not suddenly jump to enlightenment you will be overcome by sloth and laziness and carelessness and indolence so that is why that is the general prescribed instructions for human beings that is why shri krishna tells arjun out here that arjun for the benefit of everyone so earlier he had said loka sangraha me vapi for the welfare of human kind now he is repeating that in other ways he says arjun to set a right example for those who are still in this platform you continue doing your work so although shri krishna is god when he descended in his human form when he resided in dwarka he discharged all his duties like an ordinary human he would also sit in meditation upon the gayatri he would also take care of his wives and children he would also do all the vedic rituals now the vedic rituals are done so that you slowly reach god and why is god having to do all of these so he says arjun if i did not work then people would start following me you know shri krishna did nothing let us also do nothing so this would result in great confusion so he shri krishna says arjun only to set an example to the world 
So that is my recommendation to you as well. Okay, so hope uh, this uh, summarizes what we have been talking about, the concept. If great people do not work, then people follow line like that, as you see on the right-hand side. And, you know, only the external aspect of it. And then it will lead society to the pandemonium that we spoke about. And with a view for welfare of the masses is why even God, when he descends, he does discharge his duties. And in 3.25, he is saying, Lok Sangraham. Again, wishing the welfare of the world. So it is the broader picture that God and even saints have in mind because of which they do work, although they are not obligated to perform any work. You know, Lord Krishna, when he was, uh, he became a charioteer of Arjun, he would take care of like a sarathi or the charioteer would do. You know, he would give nice massage to the horses, wash them at the end of the day. He would perform every duty that a charioteer would perform, Right. Because the horses would be tired from the whole day of battle. He would nicely massage them, oil them, wash them, take care of them very nicely. And when he was a Kualbal, he would go barefoot along with the cows because cows did not have shoes or sandals. So he said, oh, how can I wear something? And go and grace them. He would do his duties even at that point. And he would present the best version to, his, to the world as well. You know, when he'll go out, he will not go out with his disabled hair and stuff like that. He will go out with a peacock feather nicely adorned and the meat nicely tucked in and his lunch breakfast bundle, you know. So he would present his best version in every sense. So that is how God, he sets an example when he comes in, although he's not obligated to do that. So what he's saying is he's emphasizing that wise should always act for the benefit of mankind because people tend to idolize them. The other day we were talking about we are all leaders in our own way, whether we like it or not. Whether we know it or not, somebody is looking up to us. We might not have assumed the mantle of a leader um, consciously, but somebody is always watching you. So we are leaders in our own sense. And that is why it's important for us not only to continue to uh, improve, we keep on becoming the better version of ourselves, uh, but also, uh, you know, uh, not just for our own sake, but for the betterment of people around us as well. When we keep on progressing spiritually, it is good for people people around us as well then they will see your best version not your worst version every day and when you are able to present your best version people like you and they emulate you they idolize you when you are only going to present your worst version then we know what happens right pandemonium can break uh, all, all around you and also it is said that when we continue to invest on spirituality we are actually see when the life applies squeeze we have spoken about this concept. So if you squeeze a grape, the grape juice will come out. If you squeeze a lemon, the lemon juice will come out. Similarly, when life applies squeeze and we, we have not invested on the virtuous qualities or on spiritual, spiritual principles, inculcating or building those assets, then when life puts a squeeze on us, the worst version, our worst version can come out as well, and which is not good. So it is said adversity not only builds character, but also reveals it. Similar to sports, people who play sports, it is said it builds character. It not only builds character, it reveals it. Similarly, when adversity comes in our life, it is not only gives us an opportunity to build our character, but also reveals what we are made up of. Because all we can give at that point is what we have truly made ourselves of at that point. So that is why it's very important to um, you know, build those assets when the timing is good because we usually don't dig a well when the house is on fire. Okay. And uh, that is why God also acts in accordance with the principle so that the community or, or the humanity to follow would look at that for the welfare of the broader society itself. Now, what he's talking about in 3.25 is when he's saying, right, this particular, you know, kuryad, vidwas, tatha, sakta, he's referring to the people who are in bodily consciousness, right? Because people who are in bodily consciousness look at the cosmetic or the externals of people around. How are they acting? How are they behaving and stuff like that? They don't know the internal dynamics, right? 
and they are attached to the worldly pleasures, but who have full faith in Vedic ritual sanctioned, and they have full faith in Vedic ritual sanctioned by the scriptures, but they are still at the bodily platform. Okay? We're talking about some people, they follow rituals very religiously. They are again at the bodily platform because rituals are a means to an end. When you understand the end is inculcating love and devotion for God, then you don't even worry about rituals at that point. Right? Like Swamiji was saying in SMX, somebody was saying, when I do my, uh, you know, bhog to God, I ring that bell and then put all that, you know, do all that ritual. So Swamiji said that when you offer food to your kid or somebody whom you love, do you do all this ritual? Ting, 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 and then all that stuff. You don't need to. So when love is there, all of it can be rejected. But if love is not there, if you have not reached that stage, of course, these are needed. So in this particular case, God has given us a ladder to climb or get closer to him. And what is that ladder? Ladder is work. We cannot shun our work or prescribed duties. That is like a basic hygiene criteria that we have to perform, uh, you know, just because we, we are born as a human in this opportunity. There are another thing that is, the so teacher may be a doctorate, but if the audience is not ready for the message, they would start with the basics only. So a lot of great uh, Jagat Gurus who have come or the saints who have descended, right? For example, uh, if you look at it right from Shankaracharya all the way up to Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, even Buddha for that matter, uh, you know, Guru Nanak Dev, they might be knowing depths of knowledge, you know, the entire scriptural context they would know. But what they tell at that point is a function of desh, what place they are in, what kal, the time they are in, what patra, who are the recipients, the time, place and the preparedness of the people. So all those factors come into play. So they may be knowing the advanced calculus concepts, but if the preparedness of the people is not there, they'll simplify, give you very simple principles, right? They just give those principles which people are ready for, even though when you when when it comes to knowing themselves they would know the pretty much the entire literature or the body of uh, scriptural knowledge that is there at our disposal so we have to understand and then what happens is the panth or the uh, what do you call that uh, sampradays they get followed because they have taught only a aspect of that truth like that elephant and five uh, six blind men story so they have a, told only one aspect of it because that was the time place, situation and the preparedness. And then the Sampradayas say that is the absolute truth and they start fighting amongst each other. Okay, this is the only truth. This is the only truth. Right? So this is this is how it happens. And that is the reason uh, Maharajji when he came, first of all, he did not follow a guru because if he had, then that Panth or Sampraday thing would have continued. They would have said, okay, are you from Dwait? Are you from Advait? Are you from Vishisht Advait? Are you from Achinte Bheda Bhed? And then they would have boxed him as well, right? His purpose was very different. Okay, I'm going to state the truth as it is and reconcile everything. That is why that was for a purpose. He did not pick up a guru, right? Because Sampradaya Pratha, it gets perpetuated and then people limit themselves in their belief system as well. Okay, now uh, I'll not go too deep into it. Maybe tomorrow because I want to give fair chance to our so ignorant people. Uh, they need to perform their duties carefully, thoroughly, according to the scriptures. Uh, and then they focus on Vedic duties, rituals, and their goal continues to be material rewards in life. They are called ignorant people. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. And if their faith is broken rit rituals, and because they have not developed faith in the higher principle of devotion, they will have nowhere to go. So God is said, don't break their faith. Let them work with the rituals. Let them continue to perform rituals that they think are going to benefit them, even though the allurement may be material rewards, but let them do that. If you break their faith, they have nowhere to go because they have not really attached to the higher principles as yet. So with that, we'll take a quick break. I will come back, if time permitting, of course, but I want to give it to um, Sri Ramya and team for the Seva teams that we have formed. So Ananya team is going to present us and tell us about their team and more about the concept of Ananyata. So over to you, Sri Ramya. I'm looking forward to this presentation and, and Q&A that will follow as well. Uh, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. In the audible, Sri Ramya. Okay, okay. I would uh, need the presentation uh, right just a minute. Are you uh, not co-host as yet? I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. I am. Oh, 
you are all good okay this is the first of many presentations the first of the four presentations we'll have from each team so you make the debut all the very best mm -hmm. go ahead Shriyam. uh thank you please uh, let me know if my screen is visible i'm okay. letting know that your screen is visible Uh, somebody could confirm if the screen is visible. It is. We can okay, see. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot, uh, everyone. So uh, we are part of the Seva team, and we represent the A of the Seva. And A, what's given to us is Ananya Bhakti. So uh, let's dwell and look into what Ananya Bhakti means. So what what is the definition of Ananya Bhakti? As per our dear Swamiji, Ananya Bhakti means the mind should be attached to the divine realm alone and that it should not be attached nowhere in the world, neither to the family, nor to the worldly objects, nor to prestige or material situations, nothing. Now, this definition initially scared me and uh, I was thinking, how could I not be attached to that family? How could I not care about my family? And uh, only when I started attending the classes more and more and uh, with my uh, interaction with uh, Nitinji and, and rest of the participants, I understood the true meaning of this definition. So I learned that duty and devotion can go hand in hand. So we are not attached to any of our family or worldly objects. It doesn't mean that we give up everything. So doing our duty is one thing and getting attached in us is another. We could do our duty without getting attached as well. Like a teacher who looks at her students in the class, she would take care of all of them with, e with equality. But at home, she's very much attached to the kids. So there is always a difference between duty and the attachment. So it doesn't mean that she doesn't love her kid at home. She loves her, but at the same time, without being attached, she looks at the overall welfare of the kid. And the next aspect is you serve with neutrality. You neither get very at attached now you hate them, but with neutrality, with an equanimity. And the other thing that you have to keep in mind while doing your duty without attachment is that you know that you don't, don't own it. Like, let's say that you're in a family, you love your spouse, you love your kids. Yes, we are not telling them don't love them, but know that they belong to God. They're part and parcel of God. And you need to take care of them like they are... Uh, you know, the ownership of them, of the kids or your spouse is with God and you are just a caretaker. So we attach our mind to God while at the bodily level, we take care of all our duties and we perform all our duties without any attachments. And God says, listen, I did not desire you to be attached to this world. I made this world because you will need it for your body. Like you see the magnet, if it gets attached and if you're holding onto the magnet and you get attached to the worldly objects, you wouldn't be able to perform your duties that easily when compared when you are detached. And the next question comes up is, why should we practice Ananya Bhakti? Again, taking from our Swamiji's lectures, the entire world, right from an ant up to Brahmaji, is in the realm of the three gunas, the Satvagun, the Rajogun, the Tamogun. And when we attach our mind in this world, Anywhere in this world, our mind will take on the qualities of this gunas. As you know, Rajogun, it's needed for uh, the passion and Tamogun uh, uh, represents uh, the Tamsik Tattva, some state of rest. And Sattvagun is also uh, very much binding, although it is more inclined towards uh, a state of peacefulness. But uh, when these three are in the right proportion, it is good. But when uh, they are out of proportion, it's, it's bad. Uh, we need these gunas to operate in this material world, but at the same time, we don't want to stay in this material world forever as this is not our true home, but rather it is a bridge which we need to use to reach our true home. So if we attach our mind anywhere here, our mind will take on to the qualities of the gunas. In other words, it will become more material and it will become more dirty. So we are in the business of cleansing the mind. So to cleanse it, you attach it to the divine realm. And how do you attach it to the divine realm? God has given us uh, name, form, pastimes, and uh, the places, the dham. So we attach our mind to these while doing our work here. 
And while we attach our mind to God, it becomes cleansed, it becomes more pure. The next, next question would come, how do we practice Ananya Bhakti and what are the characteristics of Ananya Bhakti? So there are two aspects of Ananya Bhakti. The first aspect is that God says, love me alone and only me. So our heart and mind should be filled only with loving thoughts of Radha and Krishna. And we have one mind, one heart. So we can't say that I would love the God and I would love the world as well. We could only love one thing at a time. Even the latest scientific research tells that multitasking cannot accomplish much. It's, it, it doesn't take much focus to any of the tasks and we need to focus on a single task. So the same thing here, we need to attach our mind and our heart to God. And if you're thinking of a family, material family, we are not thinking of a divine family and vice versa. And we should know that the material world and the divine worlds are opposite in nature. If we allow anything or anyone from the material world to reside in our heart, then Radha Krishna will not enter. So we need to purify our heart of all the material dirt and invite Radha Krishna into our hearts. And the second aspect of Ananya Bhakti is that no matter what the behavior of the beloved, we will always remain exclusively devoted to him. Now, this doesn't happen in the material world, nor is it practical to apply this in the material world. The material relationships are based on give and take. But unlike the material relationships, the spiritual relationship with God is not that way. We just love him, irrespective of whether we see him or we don't see him, whether he's reciprocating or he's not reciprocating. Sometimes we think that he's not reciprocating, but he might be reciprocating and we might not be perceiving it. And uh, as, as we learned from these classes, God reciprocates to an extent we love him. And the and our God's behavior can, can take three forms. Either he can love us like how he loved Yashoda's gopis and the gopas. Or he could get angry with us how he got angry with Shishupal and Kamsa. Or he could remain neutral towards us like how he externally, I mean, appearingly he remained neutral towards the gopis after leaving Vrindavan, but he was always thinking of them. But, but to the gopis, he was not there. He was remaining neutral. So he could remain in any of the state to us but we should always continue to remember him and love him. We should know that even though uh, Shri, Lord Krishna, he was angry with Shishupal and Kamsa, they continuously thought of him, even in the mode of hatred. They would always think of him in that mode. So all of them demonstrated that, you know, they, they always remembered Krishna, irrespective. And the gopis also always thought of Krishna, even after he left Vrindavan. So that way, we should also always remember Krishna and always have him in our heart. And coming to the next slide, how do we practice Ananya Bhakti? I would like to invite one of our team members, Jitya Ji and Purva Ji, to present the slide here. If you could raise your hand. Very nice. I see a couple of new faces today. Not new, but I'm glad you're able to turn on your camera. Please go ahead. Okay, Radhe Radhe, everyone. Yeah, so Sri Ram has already covered beautifully. So we'll just like, uh, like we'll summarize how can we practice Ananya Bhakti. So like um, A stands for like always think of presence of God and Guru. Uh, never engage in Kusang. So like we should avoid this judgment as possible. Uh, always chant the holy names of Sri Radha. Next, uh, we'll, Purva will present. Radhe Radhe Purva Ji. Uh, Radhe Radhe everyone. Uh, never waste time on worldly things. Wise yearn for Sri Radha Krishna's divine darshan. A is always engage mind in Rup, Dhyan, Bhajan, Kirtan, pastimes, also visiting holy places. Uh, over to you, Sri Ramya Ji. That was a nice okay, device thank you. by the team. <laughs> Uh, Jigyasa Ji and Purva Ji have presented a way how we can practice Ananya Bhakti on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll repeat and summarize the points quickly for all of you. Always think of the presence of God and Guru. Never engage in Kusam. Always chant, chant the holy names of Sri Radha. Never waste time on worldly things. Yearn for Sri Radha Krishna's divine darshan. And always engage mind in Ruth and Bhajan, Kirtan and Pastimes. These are something which we can do on a day-to-day basis. Also, we would come up with a question. If I'm always thinking of God and I'm always in the divine realm, 
who would take care of me? Would I really be taken care of? And Lord Sri Krishna, he clears this question when Arjuna asks him in the Bhagavad Gita, Shloka number 22. An Ananyaschinta yanto maam yejana padhyupashate teja mithyabi yuktanam yoga kshemam vaham yaham. Meaning, there are those who always think of me and engage in exclusive devotion to me. To them, whose minds are always absorbed in me, I provide what they lack and preserve what they already possess. God is take, telling them that he would take care of them and he would take care of the devotion and he would enhance it. And look, please emphasize on the word exclusive devotion. Ananya means exclusivity. And Sri Krishna says that he is easy to attain, but only to those yogis who are ananya chetaha, meaning their mind is absorbed exclusively in God. And Ananya Bhakti is also highlighted in many of our Vedic scriptures. In Bhagavatam, we have the shloka, Ma mekam eva sharanam, atmanam sarva dehinam, meaning surrender to me alone, who am the supreme soul of all living beings. In the Ramayana, they say, Eka baroso, eka bala, eka asha vishvasa. I have only one support, one strength, one faith, one shelter, and that is Sri Ram. In the Narad Bhakti Darshan says, Anya Sharayanam Thyago Na Nyatra means give up, surrender to the external world or surrender to anything else and surrender to God alone. So this is our crisp presentation and we would like to thank you all for the Seva opportunities and from all of us from the Seva team, thank you very much. Wonderful A round of applause for the entire Ananya team. Fantastic job, Sri Ramya and team. And I love the way uh, you divided and conquered the definition of Ananya Jikyasaji and Purvaji coming on board. And I'm sure your other members chimed in as well. That was very well thoroughly researched presentation. So kudos to you, Sri Ramya. And um, the fact that you were the first team to go. And uh, if it inspires you, fill in the feedback tracker. You can join our Ananya team. Um, it was very, very well presented and very well art articulated. And Ananyata is a very important concept in spirituality where God demands exclusivity. Okay, and that is the state we have to reach. Now, exclusivity uh, means for our Ishtadev. Now, Ishtadev, we have spoken about this concept as well. Different people have different Ishtadev. They are same God. When you start progressing spiritually, you don't see difference between, you know, the different Ishtadevs that you have. Somebody may have Lord Shiva, somebody may have Lord Ram, somebody may have Lord Krishna. Right? You see the same, it's a different form of the same father that I have. Right? It, it says that ek sadhe, sab sadhe, sab sadhe na koi. So when you do it one, when you start digging one well for your Ishtadev, that is what God is saying. That is when you deepen that relationship. And Ananyata is, is basically something that would be needed when we progress on the path of spirituality or bhakti. And yeah, there's an interesting humorous story around it. There was a guy, he said, you know what, I just worship Golok, Vindavan, Vihari, Shri Krishna only. I don't know who is Ram. Uh, no, I don't worship Ram. I don't worship Ganesh. And, you know, all the different idols previously I used to have in my temple. The other person said, uh, so he said, I am Ananya. So the other person says, you are Ananya, then I am Fananya. He said, what is Fananya? Fananya means, he said, I don't even know who they are. Okay, I just know who look right. So point here being, yeah, when you start deepening your devotion, you focus on that and have a clarity that it's the same form of your father. You don't see that this is different, this is different, little bit of this, little bit of that. No, you start building that exclusivity and that really takes your uh, devotion to another level with proper understanding that it's the same moon with different reflections. Not that somebody's different there. And at the same time, you discard Devi Devtas. Okay, You don't fall prey to those allurements. You go to the Supreme Lord himself, not Devi Devtas for material boons. Great presentation, uh, Sri Ramya. Anybody who wanted to ask any questions to Sri Ramya, Sri Ramya said, okay, bring it on. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to take on any questions on Ananyata. So don't worry, I'll be here as we all are here. But anybody who wanted to say anything about the presentation or ask any questions on it, this is very Radhe Radhe. There are few hands raised. Before that, I would like to thank Shri Ji. It's a perfect way to start the start the things. And it is uh, for us now to match up to her, what she has done for all of us. So it's pretty tough for me, I would say, for, in my case. Uh, 
so sam ji over to you raje raje set a benchmark shri ramya right very nice okay nice. so if i could say one word uh, two uh, uh, phrases actually so uh, this reminds me of uh, two songs which i learned from my team and from my co participants in the team so one i learned from nitin ji karte ho tum kanaiya bas naam ho raha hai and uh, uh the second one is uh this one uh, it was a special request from anita ji uh, to uh, mention this uh she wanted to mention this song uh, as part of the presentation mere the mere ho mere raho ho ke so i i don't know the lyrics beyond this but maybe in one of the budget sections we would take this up thank you beautiful shiram yeah very nice very true see this is the whole objective of spinning these teams where you can uh, you know realize and experience it every day that it is god and guru who get the job done you are just being an instrument by expressing your willingness to play along that's all they will get the job done and it's a great uh, i'm i'm glad that you have you know to float it and taken that initiative um, and then i'm sure more people will join in and so wait out for all the presentation or if you want to sign up with shiramya steam feel free to do so now as well i wanted to make a quick announcement that we are we look we looking for you know volunteers to manage the sound system if you are in or around dallas and are trainable and willing to do that seva please come forward uh, sunday satsang we really need help and uh, during sunday satsang to manage the sound system and training would be provided to you uh, great seva uh, because it gets broadcasted globally Uh, if you want to be part of that seva please fill in the feedback tracker especially if you know somebody or you are interested to do it in or around dallas area and you'll be instrumental in in you know uh, basically taking those bhajans and kirtans pretty much around the globe by working on that sound system okay so it's not a small seva yes let's hear from other participants in the meantime yeah i wish i could do that but so sorry <laughs> chamji it will happen so if you have made that desire it will work out Sure. This universe is like a kaya kal kalp vriksh. Sorry, not kaya kal, but kalp vriksh. Wish fulfilling tree. So it may happen very soon. Thank you so much. Naka Bogu is asking meaning of kusang. Kusang means bad company, and how to level. Kusang it? means anything that takes your mind to worldly matters. Okay, it's very simple definition, which takes you away from God. Hey, what happened to the neighbor? Have you heard about this? Let's do this. Okay, let's chill out, guys. No, chill out is okay. What I'm trying to say is anything that takes your mind to worldly topics, gossips, and um, away from God is called kusang. Okay, and then they will basically that that is something that needs to be avoided on this path. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, Sam ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, wow, what a wonderful job, Ramya ji. Just like Nitin ji, you did an excellent job. It was very very informative thank you i just want to congratulate you you and your team excellent job now they are thank you very well researched shri ramya in fact uh, you could actually fill in i mean uh, during the course of these presentations uh, we may come across you know people who can actually fill in when i am traveling or something and shri ramya is one of them It's so nicely researched and very articulate so shri ramya you are you know we've got our pair of eyes on you going forward now so. job well done thank you let's see one thing it. did she also read bhagavatam and ramayana besides uh, bhagavad gita it's a different. tough for us hiramya did it also uh, okay so i forgot to mention this that this was a team effort and the specific slide of references came in from radhita ji <laughs> see it was a team effort i can see that it's so right. good to know so it's tough for i guess my team now okay over to you sam ji radhe radhe no pressures sham ji radhe radhe yes sir yeah presentation is very good but my question is not re related to presentation yeah yeah go ahead but remember If, the oath, oath we had taken together okay see yeah i will be on the game but provided the other person is also there is no but however no are, with two conditions please <laughs> Mm. If we are attached to anything other than God, how will it affect people around us? If you are attached to anything other than God, then you are dirtying your mind because that person would be operating either in tamas 
rajas or sattva right so when you do that when you are building more uh, sanskars and trenched in the world of course you are not purifying yourself you are dirtying yourself further and when you dirty yourself further why would people feel comfortable and confident with you right it will only cause more conflicts around you unless you are you are attaching your mind to somebody who's at a spiritually higher level than you even that is not perfect but that is better than attaching to somebody who could be dirtying your mind further right that you would never know so safer bet is not to attach your mind to the world just for the sake of it okay. how how would it help basically okay rag and dwesh both are told right in our scriptures hmm. both have to be avoided in this world they are the two sides of the same coin and would have the same impact Okay. but dwesh is even more difficult to climb rag you can probably overcome dwesh you cannot overcome it's much more difficult to overcome dwesh okay so world is why to dirty it further right if we are smart we will not dirty it further but if we choose not to be smart then that choice is always there that is our default setting anyways great let's hear from monica ji and anita ji then we monica have monica ji radhe radhe राधे 13500 skydiving jump there uh, the the instructor he asked whoever is uh, the bravest can come first <laughs> so i just rose my hand <laughs> because i was actually the one who was you know <laughs> the most uh, i i really got scared right so he could see on my face so the same thing here i i thought that maybe la- presenting it last would be a good thing but no <laughs> the bar is so high already <laughs> so we'll have to match up so team <laughs> you all saw that right very well presented very well articulated and researched so and nitin ji whatever you said right when you're traveling uh, shri ramya ji can actually help you uh, this was i think my point you stole already aap mein wo siddhi aa gayi hai but anyways <laughs> i think we will we'll have a pool of people and shri ramya is the first one uh, you know you could be the third or the second one you never know right so that's the whole idea we can scout for that but yeah wonderful presentation shri ramya loved it okay. yes that that राधे राधे ऑल राइट बोलिए बोलिए या अनीता जी राधे 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 एवरीवन रम्या जी एक्सेलेंट एक्सेलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन लाइक यू आर सो काइंड दैट आई जस्ट रिक्वेस्टेड टू ऐड द भजन यू जस्ट पुट माय नेम आई डोंट डिजर्व इट um but this uh, presentation even though i saw the uh, slides everything you present it so well that uh, what we learned this whole year you summarized up in just these 10 minutes thank you so very much it like all the knowledge whatever we learned so far it just Uh, we got that uh, uh, cream that icing on the cake like it just Uh, we just uh, grabbed it so in a quick uh, session of time uh, thank you so very much and uh, nitin ji very well said that you can take upon whenever nitin ji uh, is traveling so i really uh, agree with uh, nitin ji <laughs> like yeah it's really really a good job thank you so very much she is shri ramya you are capable of much more than you previously gave yourself credit for okay so it was wonderful and i would like to acknowledge uh, you know shiramya anita ji aparna ji arun ji sumedha ji jigyasa purva ji and rajita ji jigyasa ji everybody you know who chimed in and helped her out gave her the confidence to come and you know present it so beautifully like you said it is it is a huge compliment right you were able to sum it up get the cream of so many learnings that we had and present it in such a quick time so kudos to you shiramya and i think this should uh, give you much more confidence 
and uh, sometimes we just have to take the first step and then we realize you know the ball is rolling and it's not so difficult as i previously thought right so i'm sure you will do a wonderful job and we would love to hear from you more often and doing these kind of presentations you researched so well you articulate so well presented it so well and then you're able to get the required support from your team as well so all these are wonderful qualities so kudos for that once again all right we have four more minutes two more hands yeah. we can take and then we'll uh, wrap up so great job shriram yeah on second thoughts i'm saying that a ki bina seva nahi hogi aur s ki mein seva nahi hogi so i will go to shriram ji for my turn also shriram ji sure. please get prepared now <laughs> He's already set the benchmark, so I look forward to the remaining presentations as well. Urvi, over to you. Radhe, 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 Radhe. Uh, team Ananya and Sri Ramya ji, like you had a wonderful, wonderful presentation, and you already set the bar so high for us. So next is our presentation. And while I was looking at the presentation, I was like, "Oh my God, the standards are already set so high." And I just loved it the way you got the scriptural quotations related to the topic at the end, and the way you used Ananya as the acronym and describe all the qualities. It was like you know we can that way we can also retain the knowledge with us. And obviously, devotion has to be exclusive, and it was fantastic. Thank you. very nice urvi and uh, i hope you are all set for the retreat online retreat and you are not going to cause a national stir right by taking on hopping on a train so that is good but yeah enjoy the retreat that's coming up now great yeah. well, so it's hard hard to improve perfection but i'm sure each each one of the teams are going to fine tune the bar i'll not say it's a bar But yeah, you'll do great as well. I look forward to other. Yes, Sandhya, you wanted to say something. Um, we are just like I think everything is already covered. Um, I wanted to just mention this that this week only we were learning about uh, being a leader, setting an example, and uh, Shri Ramya ji have just demonstrated it excellently. So thank you so much. I'm feeling so uh, you know, uh, like glad that uh, you are leading one of the teams, and uh, your entire team has really demonstrated it beautifully. So thank you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I see a tear drop falling down from Monica. You see, yes, you would like to chime in the the reason for the tear coming down. Pressure getting built up. <laughs> Last one, right? Sri Ramya ji, and then Urvi, and then Shyam ji, and then gone. This <laughs> Ramya ji beautifully defines it as divine pressure or divine stress. Okay, so it may not be a bad thing. Now you have to think. Okay, we have to do this with that. You will all do well. I'm telling you. You know. So yeah. all best to all the other teams. Like I said, you can fill out the feedback tracker. If you have gotten so mesmerized and inspired by Sri Ramya's presentation, then. you know you may want to give it a shot starting with ananya team you know you'll you'll you'd get to work with sri ramya but we still have three more teams to go so let's look out for those presentations as well yeah, now i know why ramya is called sri ramya <laughs> yeah so we can probably name her as shri 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 ramya now okay she was so crisp so clear in a then i think that everything was perfectly it was very well articulated like design yeah yeah okay so uh, i know we have a hard stop so we have i think uh, our time so uh, wish you all the best and look forward to seeing you tomorrow continuing on this topic of discussion and we'll talk about the spectrum of spirituality where are you okay so it will be a self discovery session tomorrow where you can figure out where do you fall in that trajectory and what is your desired state that you need to be on so we'll con continue on that fascinating journey tomorrow with that said stay blessed stay safe and all the best good night good day i'll see you tomorrow you can stay back for the next session over to you uh, sunil bhai and ajay if you are already around thank you nitin bhai beautiful presentation shri ramya ji stay stay tuned everybody we're going to learn the law of love we're going to look look into that so let's start the recording and let's start